I'm Everett Curdy, and welcome to this video about the new moon solar eclipse we have coming up on April 19th and 20th of this year. And I think it's really important to um, come on here and, you know, really get into this because this initiates the eclipse season. Um, you know, because we're going to be having several eclipses this year. Um, two of them are going to be um, in the signs of the nodes are in right now in Taurus and Scorpio, and the other two are going to be in Aries and Libra. So the solar eclipse um, is going to be happening on April 19th and 20th, depending where you live in the world. We're going to be having a lunar eclipse, a partial lunar eclipse in Scorpio on May 5th, and that's going to be about purging and releasing toxic patterns that don't serve you and so much more. We're going to be having a solar eclipse in Libra on um, April 14th, and we're going to be looking at um, our relationship dynamics and what does and doesn't work because the South Node which is about releasing um, and, you know, letting go of the baggage of the past will be, you know, will have moved into Libra um, because the nodes are going to move, change signs in July. Um, so the South Node will be in Libra and the North Node will be in Aries by the time of that particular eclipse on October 14th. And then on October 28th, we're going to be having um, a partial lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus, and that's going to be a last-ditch eclipse, sort of putting the finishing touches and putting a conclusion on the karmic um, lessons that we've learned over the past 18 months since, you know, January 2022, January 18th of last year when the nodes, the south node moved into Scorpio, and the north node moved into Taurus. So, um, you know, we'll look at the Taurus themes um, and, you know, what's going to be going on on that time, you know, at around that particular time. And that's going to deal with money, you know, the economy, you know, your values, um, redefining, you know, security, um, getting out of your comfort zone if you're, you know, too stuck in and, and um, it's not, you know, working out for you. Um, so many different things that um, maybe around that time I'll um, make a video about that and talk about what that all means. But for now, um, this um, video will be talking about this first eclipse. And so this first one is an interesting one. And I sort of heard mentions of it as, okay, there'd be an eclipse in April. Um, and, you know, knowing that the, no the nodes of the moon would be in Taurus and Scorpio, I was thinking, okay, well, this is going to be a solar eclipse, so it's going to be in Taurus. I looked it up on, um, you know, I found out um, that it would be on April 20th, and so, okay, yeah, the, the sun will move into Taurus, the moon will move to Taurus, but then I found out that's happening in Aries, at 29 degrees of Aries, and I was thinking to myself, now that's interesting, because the lunar nodes are still going to be in Taurus and Scorpio, what is that about? So, I really... You know, the first time I heard that there would be, um, and if somebody can make a musical or, you know, a song out of this, that would be wonderful, that there would be a silver eclipse on, you know, April 19th and 20th at 29 degrees of Aries. Um, you know, I, I, I found it very difficult to believe that. And every time I heard an astrologer say that, I would, you know, go into... 
a fixed mentality and mindset and attitude of, oh no, that's not the way it is. That, that's not what I know to be true. You know, eclipses don't happen unless the nodes are transiting through signs. Um, those given signs that the nodes are moving through, well, that's the signs that the, the eclipses are going to occur. And that's not always the case because it depends more on the degrees and the um, the math and the geometry of how things line up. Um, and so I eventually found out how this um, would happen and why this is occurring, and I'm really, really glad that I did. Um, so, um, you know, this eclipse is occurring at 11.14 p.m. Central Time, on April 19th, and then 12.14 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. These are obviously just two time zones. You can adjust for your time zone to find out when this eclipse is happening for you wherever you live in the world, because it's going to be different. There's mountain daylight time, there's Pacific time, there's, you know, UK time. Um, you know, so many different time zones here. So you can find out because it's going to depend. But either way, the themes and um, the information that I'm going to be talking about and explaining and discussing on this video will still be relevant, will still pertain to you in the profound ways that it will. Um, but it will be happening for different times, for different people, depending upon where you live. So this is happening. And, you know, this eclipse, this new moon, um, you know, solar eclipse, is really special. Um, and there are several reasons for why it's so special and why um, I'm very excited about it. And uh, I've been looking forward to film this video. Is the degree. It's happening at 29 degrees. Um and 51 minutes of Aries. And so if you have any of uh, your luminaries, your sun or moon, um, personal planets, Mercury, Venus, or Mars, or angles, which is the ascendant, you know, or midheaven, um, you know, or the, you know, the descendant, or any points such as, you know, the lunar nodes, um, for instance, at. Um, so you have any of these, um, you know, significations, um, any of these things, um, you know, any, you know, luminaries, planets, you know, particularly the personal planets. You know, I like to say the personal planets because as you go further down, you know, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, as you go further down, the more, you know, the planets travel more slowly, they take more time to move through a particular sign, the more they impact the collective um, more than the individual. So that's why we look at um, the, um, you know, the personal planets. So any luminaries or sun or moon personal planets, points, angles, at around, um, you know, 27 um, to 2 degrees of um of Aries um or possibly um you know two degrees um you know so yeah so 27 to two degrees of the cardinal signs in astrology with their, which are Aries Cancer Libra um and Capricorn so if you have these planets um, or, you know, points to all those kind of things. And these four signs, and you will be affected and impacted in really significant ways. Um, and, you know, you need, need to look at the houses of those luminaries, of those, um, you know, points or planets to see which area of life will be affected and really put under the microscope. Um, and that, you know, major new beginning is going to be um, occurring 
um, you know, for you at this time. So we're going to want to look at the houses, which are the areas of life that things occur to find out where this new beginning is going to be happening. And, you know, it's not that every club is going to be, you know, chaotic, destructive, transformative, faded, um, you know, and super significant for, you know, everyone out there. It just depends if the eclipse is affecting you more if you um, have, you know, planets out and around the degrees that the eclipse is uh, occurring. The eclipse is act as, you know, major uh, faded new beginnings for karmic um, things that, you know, were meant to happen, um, occurs and, um, the energy can be a little, you know, turbulent, um, not, you know, the most, you know, stable, um, and, you know, they're very intense and you're, you know, really hitting, you know, a reset button with the eclipses, um, you know, the solar eclipses, you know, beginnings, um, you know, you know major beginnings, um, and then, you know, so the solar eclipse is like a new moon when the sun and moon conjunct. And then the lunar eclipse is the full moon when the sun and the moon oppose each other. Um, and there is, you know, some astronomy with, um, you know, both solar and lunar eclipses. Lunar eclipses act as, you know, we're purging and releasing the old um, you know, and these are really powerful. Take a, you know, new moon and a full moon and just turn up the volume um, and, you know, the meaning of those. And you're going to find, you know, eclipses, especially because they relate to, you know, the lunar nodes um, in astrology. Um, and so eclipses can occur um, based off of, you know, it can either be on the north node, so the moon can be on or conjunct the north node of the moon or the south node of the moon. So the north node, you're moving toward your destiny, happiness, greater fulfillment, your dharma. In this lifetime, this is where you're, you're meant to be heading. It's upward energy. It's, you know, positive energy, you know, moving in new directions. The south node asks you to release and, you know, purge and let go the past so it can represent endings um and you know you can have a solar eclipse conjunct the north node a lunar eclipse conjunct the south node of the moon um if that lunar eclipse is in the same sign as um or or close to the same sign as the south node um you know so um you can have a solar eclipse conjunct the um north node Earth south node, and the same goes for the lunar eclipse. So maybe you can get a little bit of both. You know, sometimes a solar eclipse can be an ending and a beginning, and then, you know, the same with the lunar eclipse, it can also be an ending and, um, you know, a beginning. And um, so, and, you know, this is so interesting because it's a sort of like an out of sign conjunction, the sun and moon are at 29 degrees of Aries, but the North Node and the South Node are four degrees of Taurus and Scorpio because they travel together and they travel retrograde. And so the North and South Node are close enough away from the Sun and Moon at 29 degrees of Aries in order to make it possible for there to be an eclipse to occur, even though it's out of sign, and um, um, even though, you know, you may be, you know, surprised or, um, you know, in disbelief or um, possibly, um, you know, baffled, <laughs> you know, at first, but, um, you know, when you understand that it's all based off of the alignments and, you know, you know, geometry, and so, you know, the nodes travel retrograde, and the lunar nodes, as I said before, will enter Aries and Libra. The south node will be in Libra, the north node will be in Aries um, on the 17th of July of this year. So, um, you know, so these, um, you know, planetary, um, you know, these cosmic bodies are close enough away. So about, I want to say, um, you know, um, 
I want to say, say, five degrees on either side. So you have the, you know, um, sun or moon, um, you know, at, you know, 25 degrees of, um, you know, but, you know, five degrees of Aries to five degrees of Taurus, um, you know, and the, you know, even though this, Eclipse is on the North Node. It's not the same sign as the North Node. Um, you know, it's still conjunct the North Node. So either, you know, 25 degrees of the, um, you know, of where, um, you know, 25 degrees of either Aries or Taurus, um, or, you know, up to 25 degrees of um, Scorpio or Libra, Libra. And then on the other side, you could look at, you know, five degrees of Aries and Taurus and five degrees of Scorpio and Libra. That's the range where, you know, you can have, you know, an eclipse of the sun and moon fall, you know, between 25 degrees, you know, of, um, you know, Aries. Um, and, you know, you know, I don't want to, you know, get into it, but, you know, on either side, you know, I hope that you can see that, you know, this is, um, happening this particular way. So the sun and moon at, you know, late degrees of signs and then the north node at early degrees of the, um, of the, you know, the next, you know, the signs right beside it, um, five degrees on either side, that's where eclipses can happen, even though still doesn't make sense. Um, hopefully I'm clarified it. Now I'm going to be really blunt. If you're an astrologer watching this or you're planning to make a video about it, I would definitely explain um, why this is happening, um, you know, to get into any of the specifics of it, make it really clear, um, you know, how there can be an eclipse, even though the nodes are in different signs than the sign or signs that the eclipse is occurring. In. So it's, you know, imperative that that is explained, um, you know, and clear enough. So this is going to be a longer video. Um, so, you know, so anyway, so now I'm going to get into it officially. So what is a new moon? Let's just start there. Um, new moons are internal times to go inward, inside yourself, go reflective, the energy is more quiet, and you can set intentions for, you know, what you want, want to start and manifest. It's a time of new beginnings, it's a time of initiation. It's a time, you know, where you reflect on what you truly want, you go into the dark, uh, darkness inside of yourself and, you know, enter into your truth. And, um, you know, get quiet and, you know, get real with yourself and um, do the spiritual practices and, um, you know, um, you know, set those intentions and then act on those intentions and, you know, begin that new thing, manifest that new thing, you know, desire, goal, um, you know, project, you know, whatever it is, um, that plan that you want to accomplish um, you know, after that, you know, new moon or, um, you know, on the new moon, um, certainly you can d do the same thing on the full moon, but you know, I'm talking about the energy of, you know, a new moon here. So it begins the cycle of the moon in you know, the phase of the moon, the moon waxes to reach the full moon, and then it wanes all the way back to the new moon with the squares of the sun and moon in between the new and full moons. Um, and so the aspect of the sun conjunct the moon or a new moon, um, really, you know, we can shine a light on your personal life, your personal relationships, especially dealing with family and, you know, your inner world, your close circle of friends, what's going on in your world, in your life. It's about going inside yourself, um, facing issues regarding um, the sun, which is your ego and individuality and the light that you want to shine in the world and the real contribution and difference and impact that um, um, you want to make on the world and 
um, versus your, you know, emotions and, um, you know, nurturing and care and, you know, your instincts and intuition and how you need to be nurtured and cared for in more internal matters. And that is the moon. So the balance between the sun and um, the moon here um, becomes important. And, you know, the moon deals with, you know, your emotional nature, um, you know, moods, um, deals with family also. Um, and so, yeah, that's, you know, what's going on um, with that. And then, um, you know, this um, new moon solar eclipse is very karmic. This is going to set the stage and foreshadow us for the 18 months, you know, about 18 months, um, you know, work that we're going to be doing and lessons that we're going to be learning and themes we're going to be encountering um, with when the lunar nodes, the south node and north node, will be in Aries and Libra. This is going to be about releasing unhealthy relationship patterns, overly being overly accommodating, people pleasing, um, you know, passive, um, and um, you know, looking, you know, always you know, looking you know to what the other wants, and you know, unhealthy, you know, relationship patterns, or expecting the other person to complete you, and. Um, you know, fill in the gaps and, you know, validate, you know, those kinds of things. And the North Node in Aries is about stepping into your authenticity, being unapologetically you, um, completing yourself and being self-sufficient and really doing what you want and going after your desire and being independent and being a pioneer. So we're working with these two parts of ourself and also deals with taking risks. So the more we you know, move toward areas, the more we're going to be feeling satisfied and um, like our life is heading in a positive and meaningful direction. And that's really serving us. Um, so, uh, so, you know, when we're looking at this particular solar eclipse, um, and there's a lot of astronomy with an eclipse, as we have the moon moving between, it's crossing the path and it comes between the sun and earth. And then the moon kind of comes onto the sun, you know, covers the sun, either partially, there's partial eclipses or total solar eclipses where the moon totally covers the sun and it casts a shadow and it's totally dark. Um, and there was one eclipse, um, I think August 21st, 2017, that happened. Um, that may have um, been a total eclipse, but, you know, I remember going out and, um, you know, viewing that. Um, and, um, um, you know, in person and seeing that it get dark and um, it was, you know, really exciting. You know, it's a treasured memory of mine, so... Um, it blocks the sun's light to reach Earth, and eclipses can be visible at certain places on Earth. They have a path that they cross. Uh, and so this eclipse is also a hybrid solar eclipse. It's between a total eclipse and a partial solar eclipse. Now, I'm not going to get into the really complicated astronomy of this, so you can check that out for yourself. On, um, you know, they'll all have links that I'll put in the description for you to read about the astronomy, the astronomy of um, this eclipse, um, and about eclipses, annual eclipses, hybrid eclipses, solar eclipses. Um, I'll have those links down in the description because, um, you know, it's really, you know, where you have to be exact about the information, and if you're interested to do to dig deeper into the astronomy of eclipses and you can check out those links um and um so yeah so um now um this is an annular total um eclipse 
and you know again you know the whole thing about <laughs> being total eclipse and you know it's taken me a while to be on the same side of you know astrologers saying this is very significant but now um you know i'm you know with that and i realize how significant it is and i'm going to get into that right now so um you know talking about the degree first of all getting into the degree this is happening at 29 degrees of Aries. so this degree deals with themes such as urgency this you know an urgency to change something or to initiate something um or you know feeling like i just want to do this now i just want to start this now you know i don't want to wait any longer you know i just want to get going and you know get something off the ground and you know the time is now you know no nonsense i've had enough of this old stuff it's time to completely stop that and immediately you know launch myself into something new that's how this might feel so there's an urgency of where you know you need to do it now you know and now we're never kind of feeling and you know the whole thing about waiting and being patient for the new beginning those feelings may not be as high during you know and around this time um and so urgency transition because it's the 29th degree of a um sign and so the 29th degree indicates a tying up of loose ends of all the lessons that you've had to learn with a particular planet or luminary transiting through that sign. Um, it's growing and evolving and becoming more mature the more it moves from zero degrees to 29 degrees of sign because that's how many degrees there are that, you know, of a sign. So um when we get to that 29th degree we're wrapping things up you know we're tying up loose ends we're reflecting and um sort of we reap what we've sown of all of the um lessons and experiences um and issues that we've had to deal with with the themes of that planet and that sign and you know that house in that area of life so it's a transition um, this can also be, um, you know, I want to call this eclipse uh, a volatile and intense eclipse to the last degree. And I mean that literally um, because it is um, and it probably will be. Um, who knows? You know, I wonder what will be happening with, you know, the war in Ukraine, Putin, all those kind of issues, um, you know, um, on the political and economic spectrum um you know i just um am very curious to see what will be happening on on you know in that arena um and you know on the mundane you know level you know world astrology there's several astrologers who deal with you know world or mundane astrology and uh, you can go find out you know find um, you know, those people and, you know, look up this information for um, this, that information to find out how this eclipse may impact, um, you know, world events, um, global uh, events, um, and, you know, and affairs. So um, volatility and intensity, there's sort of a, you know, you know, it's really hot. There's just a lot of, you know, emotions getting stirred. And there may be a lot of you know, really intense emotions like anger, um, frustration, um, pressure, stress, um, and, um, you know, energy and drive and motivation. Um, and it's not wise. I wouldn't recommend sitting on that energy during this time here is it's about getting up and taking action this is a time where you want to take action toward those things and not sit on that energy um so it's very you know intensity just uh, you know it's very intense just imagine um a pressure cooker or you know a tea um a tea um you know the um you know teapot or 
um, kettle or, you know, something, you know, and you hear it getting louder and louder as it's, you know, screeching and the pot of boiling water. Could this be when, um, you know, things really come to a head? This eclipse is also the only the endings, too, because it's at 29 degrees of Aries, where things come to a head and, you know, the blood is spilt, <laughs> because you can say, and, uh, um, you know, water, um, the pot boils over. And um, making, you know, it's also a good idea to, you know, make sure that your intentions are healthy and, and that they are, you know, the whole idea of compassion and prosperity. Are these going to impact people in a positive way? Are they going to be destructive? Are they going to you know, hurt relationships? Um, or it doesn't have to be, your, you don't have to be, you know, aggressive and, um, you know, assertive and, you know, self, you know, centered and self-focused all the time where you can have those goals and have those, um, you know, ambitions and have those, you know, desires, but they can also not hurt, um, you know, your, you know, relationships with others. So this is a degree of strength, you know, there's a lot of, you know, strength with this, um, you know, degree power, you know, it's really, you know, powerful. We can take Aries and, you know, because Aries is ruled by Mars, Scorpio is ruled by Mars and they were having one eclipse occurring in Aries, another eclipse occurring in Scorpio. Both of these are Mars ruled signs and eclipses always come in pairs, one after the other. Um, and, you know, in sets of two, um, you know, with one happening the other. A lunar eclipse first, a solar eclipse second, or the other way around. So, um, the 29th degree is known as the anoretic critical degree in astrology. And this can be where you may feel like just suddenly jumping into situations impulsively um, acting. And it could be the sudden, a sudden thrust of momentum and a need to initiate. The 29th degree is also associated with crisis. Um, and maybe it could possibly indicate the shadow sides of um, that particular sign. It can also deal with, um, could indicate loss, but, um, you know, who knows? That, that that's more, you know, the, the lunar eclipse we're going to have that deals with loss and, and releasing, you know, we'll get to that. So it points to the shadow sides of the sign. And then it deals with um, the real need for change. So this eclipse is, you know, where we can plant a seed for karmic new beginnings, huge new beginnings. So this acts as a preview, much like the lunar eclipse that we had on November 19th of 2021. That was a preview into the lunar nodes in Taurus and Scorpio. So that happened, and then um, January 18th, the notes changed signs, and so that gave us a preview. This eclipse is going to kind of be you know, the same thing, um, but it's going to be different because it's in Aries and not Taurus. So you're dealing with different, the notes in different signs, and we're dealing with different themes here. So, um, so this is where it, um, you know, you can really feel the courage. Aries is about courage to go after what you desire. Um, and um, it's about having the bravery and, you know, belief in yourself to push forward that much more. And to, um, you know, just, um, you know, go there and, you know, expand and, um, and you know, really, you know, empower yourself to do something new, you know, to challenge yourself and to have the drive to um, be who you want to be and, you know, do what you um, want to do with whatever quest that you're going on, um, you know, in your life. A wonderful time to watch, launch things, although there could be some um, delays to that. It's a day later, Mercury is going retrograde in Taurus, so it's a good time to slow down, revise, reflect on that massive, you know, new beginning that you may be setting, 
and the work you're retrograding Taurus is going to, you're going to be, you know, looking back at that and finalizing things. Um, and um, I have another video on uh, Mercury retrograde and um, Taurus that I did where you can ground those new ideas and those new goals into reality and you can um, make them count and you know what is the structure here how stable is it you know how am I going to make this steady um, and um, how am I going to make this long term as well and really solid you know because that's Taurus energy because it is an earth sign and on April 20th the sun and moon are going to move into Taurus although they're not going to conjunct even though you know they could but they're not going to Sun and Moon, the Sun and Moon are just conjuncting right at the very end of Aries. So the Sun and Moon are going to move into Taurus on the 20th of April. And it's going to be a, you know, welcoming into Taurus season of this year. Um, so, um, you know, but while we're still in that Aries energy, so this is sort of a second chance where we've had the new moon in Aries at zero degrees on the 21st of March, but now this is an even bigger new beginning because it's an eclipse happening. So, um, you know, now is a sort of second chance where if you didn't feel like you initiated and got what you wanted off the ground, well, now is a wonderful opportunity to um, really hit the ground running and um, and launch whatever you want to and start something new, start fresh. Um, another theme with this is choosing to be authentic, choosing to be real and, you know, truth to yourself. Aries looks at you being truthful to yourself and honest with um, yourself. Um, it doesn't look for, um, you know, not being real. Um, it's about, you know, um, who you want to be and um, what kind of message do you want to spread how do you want to be a role model of um, expressing yourself and um, deals with that concept. Um, and, you know, taking action. Aries is a sign that doesn't want to sit on something. It's about acting, um, having the, you know, sort of um, push and sort of lighting the match for, you know, to get it going. It's ruled by Mars, which is the planet of action and movement. Um, you know, without Mars, where would, you know, the action be and the, you know, the momentum and um, stamina to, um, you know, to um, make something happen. Um, and so, um, you know, Mars and Aries provides that force. Aries initiates the whole zodiac cycle so it's the first sign of the zodiac we're getting a we're getting the ball rolling um and so there could be you know again strong feelings intensity and you may find yourself maybe feeling the need to do something impulsive because you know you're not going to tolerate any um you know being stuck in the same paradigms and that same story you want to you know let that go and um and just you know go into new beginning it's just you know an inner knowing of what you um um you know want to start it's just um you know knowing it's time in an inner sense you know it's time to move in a new direction. So being independent, um, being assertive, standing up for yourself as well um, is another theme with Aries. Um, respecting yourself, being you know, loyal to yourself, putting yourself first in a healthy way, um, valuing yourself, which is what the North Node in Taurus is about. It's about putting, you know, staying true to um, what you value. Um, and, um, yeah, and risk-taking. Don't be afraid during this time to take 
risk, you know, to try something new. Um, so it is the last day of all the planets being direct. Mercury is slowing down, <laughs> and it's going to go direct on the 21st. It's the last day for all this direct energy. Every single planet's been moving direct since January 22nd. Starting the 21st, um, we're going to have a Mercury retrograde. Um, and so, yeah, um, you know, make, you know, I would really encourage you to make the most out of this time. This is sort of a, an eclipse, is sort of, um, you know, areas, is, you know, go time and it's, you know, you know, major. And then we're going to be having, you know, the retrograde energies coming in, um, Pluto retrograde at the very beginning of May, um, it's going to add to that. So, um, and so, um, it also deals with being honest to Aries. It's about honesty, um, being blunt and direct and taking direct action toward your goals. And when you do that, you'll benefit and you will be feeling, um, you know, like things, you know, matter more, more, um, you know, happy and, um, you know, joyful and, um, you know, because that's, since this is North Node Eclipse, that's what the North Node is inviting you to do uh, with all the things I discussed. Um, so eclipses can occur and, you know, they can have major impacts and effects that can last up, you know, they can be life-changing, they can also last up to six months until the next eclipse season, um, with the next solar eclipse that comes around, or the next lunar eclipse. So from one solar eclipse to the next solar eclipse, or from one lunar eclipse to the next lunar eclipse. Um, and so, looking at the other side of Aries. Now, I'm talking more about Aries, and this is a longer video. Um, I like to make these videos shorter, um, but this is a longer one, um, you know, and that's what I was thinking of, um, you know, already. So, um, you know, before doing this, so looking at the downsides of Aries to be aware of deals with, you know, aggression, you know, being overly aggressive or pushy, overly selfish, my way or the highway, um, self-righteous qualities, arrogant, um, you know, impulsive, domineering or controlling because it's a cardinal sign. Cardinal signs are about leadership and taking um, the reins. Um, and um, it also, you know, Mars is the god of war. And so it, this could be violent and maybe there could be more violence um, you know, coming about more discussion on violence, especially maybe, you know, gun violence, since this eclipse is close to Jupiter and expanding, it's expanding all those areas of traits. It's been, Jupiter has been in Uri since December 20th of last year or so. Um, this eclipse is close to Jupiter, so it's helping to bring in, you know, benefits and blessings and um, expansion and growth. Um, um, but it could also expand the negative sides of areas of shadow sides. And that could be, you know, certainly, um, you know, guns, looking at, you know, guns, police, people, and, you know, who have those positions of power. Um, and I was seeing, you know, a documentary today about, um, maleness, because it, Aquarius is male energy, Mars is your male energy, and how manliness can be put in a category of, you know, genders. Men are supposed to be tough and in and control and, and, and all these things, and when they're, you know, feminine and understanding and um, intellectually curious and, and all those kind of things, then, then maybe in society it's been condition into men that that may come at a cost of that those expressing those feminine qualities may be you know them being you know a weak link um you know weak links or you know something like that um 
and you know i'm certainly in 100 percent you know you know disagreement with you know men um only being you know masculine and all this you know expressing those qualities because there's multiple masculinities and and um you know i think that it was kind of narrow um you know, and how it portrayed um, men as acting and committing a lot of crimes and, you know, more crimes than women. And, and, and um, it, it went through a lot. Um, but um, you know, that could be an important topic of conversation here. Um, so, you know, so the areas can result in violence and also rage um, and then, you know, emotionally destructive uh, behavior hurting others. Even though this is an area of solar, um, you know, eclipse, this is happening on the cusp of power between um, Aries and Taurus. Um, so someone who's really willful, wants to be in control, wants to dominate, and is very stubborn and fixed in their, you know, point of view, you know, very powerful and can take on the lead but you know there's also the the shadow sides of that um and so this is sort of a scorpionic um eclipse um in a way um you know and again it can be areas can be emotionally destructive and hurting others um and that's where libra comes into the mix of, you know, let's, you know, collaborate. Um, there's teamwork that exists. Let's, you know, find peace and balance. Um, and let's consider the perspective of others. Um, and, you know, let's be open-minded. Um, and don't forget that balance. So, uh, yeah. Now, the aspects to this huge reason why this is so profound is because the sun and moon they're squaring pluto now this is another out of sign aspect pluto looks at depth intensity destruction rebirth of what doesn't serve us um and it can look at empowerment and moving on to a new path of, um, you know, of, um, you know, radical transformation um, with Pluto. It brings things to light. It, you know, it digs up the secrets of things. And Pluto is at zero degrees of Aquarius. Very early degree of Aquarius at the time of this eclipse. So even though it's at zero degrees of Aquarius, the math still lines up where the sun and moon in Aries are squaring the Pluto. So the sun and moon at 29 of Aries is squaring Pluto at zero of Aquarius. Um, so this lends itself with the moon square Pluto to destructive or compulsive habits that need to be released. Um, you know, and it may be very uncomfortable. You may be holding on to the past of, you know, I don't want to, you know, let this go. Even though there's an inner knowing of, I, you know, need to, um, you know, do something new and, you know, release this and step into the unknown and be willing to be uncomfortable. Um, there is a need to be um, holding on to the way that it was and holding on to um, the past because it's comfortable, it's known, it's familiar. Um, and it's what you're used to, even though you know deep down that it's not right for you. Um, and sun squaring Pluto could be, you know, feelings of intense emotions of where you want to physically, verbally express those uh, emotions. But because it's a square, there may be difficulty with expressing those intense emotions. And it's not about suppressing the emotions, but it's about allowing the feelings to be present within you, allowing them to be there, allowing those intense feelings that they do show up. I'm not saying that they will, um, but if they do, allowing them to be 
present inside of you. Don't, you know, push them, shove them away. The way Pluto works is whatever you resist persists. And if you are pushing things down, resisting, not willing to face those demons, not willing to look at the, you know, skeleton in your closet and go down to the basement and, and face your shadows, it digs up the truth and it has you look at what is really going on and what is the truth. And Pluto is going to have you look at that and face that one way or another, whether you want it or not. It is going to be an energy where it's going to bring these kind of circumstances where you have to let something go. And it may be difficult. And there may be a tension and a internal psychological battle where one part of you feels the yearning and the need to move in these new directions and the other part of you is resistant. It is about um, being willing to um, move in the new uh, directions, let something go um, in order to move forward in your life, in order to um, evolve. Um, and, you know, another thing is, um, you know, just, you know, allowing the feelings to be there. Um, this could also be power struggles. Um, with, you know, moon scoring Pluto could show up, you know, abuse, um, you know, manipulation, jealousy, those kinds of things, you know, where have you been, um, you know, used or, um, you know, if someone's looking at the person's motives and saying that their motives are not positive or, or, um, they're ulterior or, they're um, dark or what is what are the person's intentions behind what they want from you and what are their true um, motives when they're interacting with you is it you know to get to know you on a deeper level to help you grow to um, you, um, you know better you to um, connect with you on a deeper level or to um, put you in, you know, greater harm or, or, um, hinder you, uh, especially because it's your reason that expressing yourself, being true to yourself, and are they, um, you know, is it, uh, is it dark? Is it an unhealthy kind of relationship, um, where, um, you know, it's just not going to serve you anymore. So, um, you know, the high road of this can be, again, evolution, transformation, and the sun squaring Pluto. This can be power struggles or not being allowed to express your individuality because the sun, you know, you're the sun of your, you know, life and all the planets revolve around the sun. Um, and there may be difficulties with not being, feeling like you're not able to express yourself, um, or feeling like you have a tremendous amount of power and you're sort of dimming that light and dimming that power because it's so intense and there's such a depth there. Um, this, there could also be feelings of ambition and strength to achieve a goal and go after something. Pluto can be, you know, focus and you're intensely focusing on a goal and you're, you know, going toward that. Pluto rules Scorpio, which is a fixed sign. Um, once they latch on to a desire, there's no stopping them. They're going to do whatever it takes and give it all they got. Um, and um, there could also be feelings of, you know, the need to be in control, like you are in control. Um, this could also indicate a transformation to your identity where you're, you know, changing who you are and how you're putting yourself out there in some way. Um, and this can be an opportunity, a, a healing opportunity, if there's any wounds about um, shining your unique light. Um, and, you know, if there's any wounds based off of past conditioning where you were not allowed to, um, you know, be yourself, you know, stand out um, and, um, um, you know, be authentic. 
And of course, we had the Jupiter Chiron conjunction on March 12th of this year. I have a video about that. And then, you know, Jupiter um, and Chiron, you know, they're both in Aries. And so it's definitely, you know, looking at those wounds. Um, and then also around this time, we have Mercury in its Mercury retrograde season throughout the Mercury retrograde season, which was from April 7th of this year to the end of May of this year. And so Mercury is conjunct Uranus. So this can be about innovative forward thinking. You have um, these genius original ideas that you want to implement. You know, you're open to new um you know, schools of thought, new wavelengths, new you know, new perspectives, you know, meeting people from different backgrounds, learning from them, you know, there's new information, there's new angles to look at things, um, um, you know, radical new ideas, flashes of insight, flashes of truth, where you see truth, um, of, you know, what has to change, of, you know, what you want to change and just truth and information um, coming out in general, especially the Mercury retrograde season, which is about reevaluating, reflecting, and, um, and you know, learning those um, lessons and, um, yeah, and, you know, learning certain lessons. Um, you know, sudden truths also, and realizations coming to the forefront. This is also a great time to try something new, to have an, an ingenious idea. You know what? I'm going to go after that. I'm going to try something, especially if it relates to writing, communications, maybe, you know, communication on technology, maybe, you know, on social media or launching a podcast or, or um, you know, starting a YouTube channel or something. Um you know, in, you know, when it comes to communication, so trying something new that's out of the box that is, um, you know, your own idea, experimentation, um, freedom, and breaking out of your routines as well, um, and, um, and so, um, this is a great time, you know, when Mercury aligns with Uranus to chase down the new and exciting, to, you know, to learn new things, to learn about something, you know, like science um, you know, or something like astrology or, you know, something like that, um, and to, um, really, you know, engage your mind and expand your mind in, you know, a new subject matter or, um, something new. Um, learn something new. And also with Mercury conjunct Uranus, there could be uh, unexpected news that may come about around the time of the conjunction. Um, so be aware of that, um, if, however it impacts you in your life and the particular life area in your chart. Um, there could be uh, unexpected truths or news that comes about. Pluto and Aquarius is sort of um, uh, um, squaring the lunar nodes um, in Taurus and Scorpio, which is um, time to really transform, evolve, grow, you know, where you're moving towards your destiny. And it's sort of propelling you into um, um, changing um, and, you know, again, moving into the, you know, new beginnings. Now, on the 20th of April, because of the synchronicity of events happening that line up so well with, um, you know, in history, um, you know, and this may be controversial, I'm aware of that, but, you know, um, Adolf Hitler, if you consider what happened in history and sort of the charismatic authority that he portrayed with his, you know, speeches and the, you can feel the passion and intensity and the, um, you know, shouting and, you know, enthusiasm and, you know, energy 
in his voice and the kinds of, um, you know, just listen to one of those speeches and you can uh, feel that passion even if it was not for the greater good. Um, that emotional intensity and that urgency of it needs to happen now with the, um, you know, Plutonian themes that I was discussing, all, you know, all of that and it being an eclipse, um, it, you know, all these things sort of come together and, um, you know, if, if you study, you know, World War II and, you know, Adolf Hitler, then all that come you know, really ties in to all this information um, that I'm talking to you about here uh, on this video, you know, really ties in very well. Um, and, you know, sort of um, where there's a lot of, you know, similarities and you can see how the themes of this eclipse tie into um, that historical connection. And it's certainly a negative and destructive example of Scorpio energy, but also Aries energy. So that is the video on this particular eclipse. Um, I'll hopefully do another video on the lunar eclipse coming up on May 5th, which will be in Scorpio. Thank you for watching. Oh my goodness. This was long. <laughs> hopefully you enjoyed it.